Hi, this is Fadi Gerges from Harvey Production Studio. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be running a detailed comparison between three different audio interfaces. The first one is the Analog Galaxy 32. Then we're going to be comparing that with the second one, which is the Avid Matrix interface. And then the third one would be the Focusrite RedNet 32. And uh, I'm pulling all three because they have similar features-ish and they're all HDX compatible interfaces for Pro Tools HDX as well as having other features in them as well. Um, and I've had uh, the opportunity to work with them. Uh, I actually own a Galaxy here in my studio as well and I've worked with several places where I've installed the uh, Focusrite, RedNets and the Avid as well. So um, in today's video I want to walk through all technical specs of all of these as well as a lot of the uh, similars between them and the differences, pros and cons of each one. So make sure to stick around and we're going to walk through all those details. Okay, the first thing, let's start with the IOs, the analog IOs, specifically analog. Um, the Galaxy has 32 analog input, 32 analog outputs, and a dedicated speaker output, left and right TRS. So you get a basically 64, 66 channels. On the Avid one, it's a little bit different because you get 16 IOs, analog inputs, and 16 analog outputs, so it's half the amount, but it has few other ones that the Galaxy doesn't have. It still have the same two dedicated speaker outputs, similar to the Galaxy, but then it also has two microphone preamps on the back side, and then it has on the front side, it has two instrument line-ins, and it also has two dedicated headphone outputs, headphone pre's, which the Galaxy doesn't have any of these. So if you count just a number of IOs, the Galaxy have more number of IOs, but the, the Avid has more versatile IOs. So it comes down to your usage. Do you need headphone amps for outputs or do you need more um, line ins and line outputs for like your hardware inserts and stuff like that? It will come down to which one is more beneficial. Now the RedNet uh, is purely digital, has no analog IOs at all. Uh, which is one of the, my opinion, one of the big drawbacks of the RedNets that I don't really like. Okay, the next thing is HDX. So all three interfaces support Pro Tools HDX. And if you're not familiar with this, that's basically a specific DigiLink um, port on the back of the interface that connects with HDX cards. That way you can use DSP plugins from Pro Tools, the one that are made by Pro Tools and some other companies as well that are working with Pro Tools. And then you can do direct monitoring, you can do no latency monitoring, or as well just in mixing process and you're using a lot of those DSPs so that way it's less CPU heavy. All three support the HDX. Uh, the difference is the Galaxy supports 64 channels of HDX as well as the Avid Matrix, but then the RedNet supports only uh, 32 channels, so if you need 64 channels, you need to have two of these units racked together. Which makes sense from a price standpoint because the Galaxy is priced at $599, so it's almost six grand, and the Matrix is priced at five grand, but then the RedNet is priced at $2,500, which is half the price. Uh, which we'll talk about the pricing in just a minute um, because there's other things that affect the price as well that I'll explain in just a minute toward the end of the video. Okay, the next thing is a SPDIF which is your digital stereo SPDIF outputs. Uh, the Galaxy has a SPDIF output, which I actually use a lot in my studio and I really like and appreciate, but none of the other two interfaces have that feature. And then after SPDIF, let's talk about Dante. Uh, all three interfaces work with Dante, which is um, a great feature and it's becoming more and more commonly used right now in a lot of places, events, specifically when you're uh, using it as big venues and events, uh, a lot of houses of worship and churches, um, as well as just, I've worked at theaters where I were recording audio and everything was set up Dante in that place. Um, Dante is also a very convenient format for broadcast. So that way you can uh, have a lot of applications and broadcast uh, for mixing broadcasts for events and sports events and stuff like that. All three supports Dante. The difference is the same thing as the HDX. The Antelope takes 64 IO, 64 in, 64 output on Dante, then um, at the highest sample rate, which is at 192. And then the same for the Avid Matrix, but then for the Focusrite RedNet HD32, it only supports 32 of IOs on Dante, and then you would have to have a second one. Also, the other thing about the the RedNet HD32 is if you run at the highest sample rate, your Dante number shrinks in half. Uh, so each unit only, so one unit instead of becoming 32, it will become 16 channels. Um, the next on the list is MADI. And then the Antelope unit is the only unit that supports MADI, 
which surprisingly, I was shocked that none of the other units support MADI. MADI is a, an incredible protocol. I actually use MADI in my studio in here. The difference between MADI and Dante, so because I've a lot of people are confusing both and they think both are just over IP or, or network. And not to get into crazy tech details, they're just in a very simple way. Dante is, I'm grabbing the audio, I'm converting it into over IP, so it's over network. And then that audio stays in the network and is being duplicated to as many times as you want to. Now that has an advantage because I mean, I can grab an ethernet cable, duplicate those audio and take them to so many different rooms, control rooms, different uh, broadcast rooms, all that kind of stuff. With Matty, it is a fiber optic cable that carries 64 channels of audio, input and output, but it's a one-to-one, -one, which means I can grab 64 channels from this unit to 64 channels of this unit by one cable, but that cable does not duplicate those channels to so many other places. Advantages of Matty in, in setups that I've personally used, um, it's a one-to-one, -one, it's very clear, there is no IP conflicts, there is no uh, the network screwed up or got unpatched or clocking issues, it's a lot more stable. So for example, there's a lot of setups we would use on stage when you have uh, like SSL, I love their boards, and their stage boxes are MADI. So I just grab a MADI cable into the SSL unit and then I never have to worry that any of my mics or mic pre's or stage box will get unassigned or assigned to the wrong place. It's a one-to-one, -one, done deal. Um, versus with Dante, sometimes you lose connections or something, um, I've had that happen before somebody tap into the network by accident and plugs in the wrong device, it conflicts IP addresses and you get stuff unpatched and freaks out and all that kind of stuff. So that's the advantage of MADI in my opinion. And MADI is, uh, only Galaxy supports MADI but none of the other two units have MADI features in it. Now the next is ADAT, which is a very common that a lot of people use, which is a fiber optic cable that carries up to eight channels per cable. Uh, at the 48 sample rate, and those channels decrease when you go higher in sample rate. So the Galaxy has only one ADAT input and one ADAT output, so eight channel in, eight channel out. But the Avid Matrix has two ADAT, each carries eight channel, so 16 in, 16 out, and the RetNet carries no ADAT at all. The next thing on the list is Dolby Atmos integration and room correction. Uh, this is a really big deal because now a lot of studios are turning into Dolby Atmos, and Dolby Atmos is becoming more common uh, in the music industry as well as specifically ones who works in post-production for video and film and mixing for film. The Galaxy and the Avid Matrix, they both have full Dolby Atmos integrations up to 16 speakers, uh, which is basically all what you need for Dolby Atmos, but the RedNet is not really, um, does not support its own native version of uh, Dolby Atmos routing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you would have to take the Dante outputs and then you would have to take that to a third party software uh, or um, Adobe Render and then send Dante signal to those units for rendering. Especially if you have speakers in the room, with the RedNet you would run into a problem because you need to physically feed 16 channels of analog output to the speakers which you can't do and you have to get different converters but for the Galaxy and the Avid Matrix they both because they have physical line outputs then you can feed all your Adobe Atmos speakers in the room without having to worry about this. Now in terms of speaker and room correction, this is a really cool feature that the Galaxy and the Avid Matrix have but the RedNet does not have. I personally don't use it from either one of them because I use my Grace design which has that feature in it, the M908. Uh, but for those who don't have this, this becomes a game changer because all what it is, it's basically in a simple form, it's a DSP EQ on your speaker outputs. Um, both units support those. The difference is the Avid Matrix have double the amount of EQ bands that the Galaxy have. So the Galaxy have, you can have up to eight bands per speaker and you can have that up to 16 speakers. So that's about 128. But on the Avid Matrix, you can have up to 16 band per speaker, up to 16 speakers, which is 256 bands in total. And all of these bands do, you put the bands on, these bands could be a high shelf, low shelf, or an EQ curve, and then you can just write EQ on these speakers for room correction. Uh, in my setup, I, for example, use the, uh, how you would use it. These are not auto calibrated, uh, so they are not similar to the sonar works or stuff like that. You would actually need to properly and professionally tune your room. So you grab a room tuning mic, you would use a software similar to like REW or something like that. You would read your room read all the measurements from the room, and you can export these files, 
with the Avid uh, matrix, there is a way to export files from there and re-import them back into their software. So that way you can apply some of that room correction, but you still have to do manual work to it and it's not simple. And then on the Galaxy one, you would just uh, look at your room curve from REW and then you would make EQ correction to compensate for this and remeasure again until you get your room as flat as you can. Uh, now the RedNet had none of this at all, no room correction whatsoever. Now in base managements, both units, the Galaxy and the Avid Matrix have base managements. If you have subs in the room, then you can run different uh, cross overs to where the sub is, the volume of the sub, just all the basic uh, base management features. But then the again, the RedNet does not have any of this. Next is dedicated monitor controllers because both units are rack units. And then um, not everybody is gonna wanna spend $8,000 on a Grace monitor controller that supports full Dolby Atmos setup and da, 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 to be able to monitor in the room. Uh, so the Galaxy, they don't come with this. You buy it separate, which is the MRC right here. It's their new monitor controller and it actually plugs in just USB to the Galaxy, to, to your computer, I'm sorry. And then what it is, it becomes, and I have a completely separate dedicated video for the MRC, you guys can check it out on my YouTube channel. It becomes like a, a remote control for your unit. You, uh, it has full surround setup on it feature, so it has all 16 speakers, I can see them in here for Adobe Atmos setup. And then you have volume and then you have just simple features as dim and solo and uh, mute. And then you have five assignable buttons that you can assign them to specific routings inside the software. Now with the Avid Matrix, um, you can use, because they use the Dadman software, you can buy something like the Dadman unit, uh, monitor controller unit, and that would be your monitor controller one. But the difference is this one has way less buttons on it in terms of full surround capability and being able to monitor and, and uh, solo specific speakers in your Adobe Atmos room. Uh, so the MRC has more capabilities this way. Now the RedNet doesn't have that. You can buy some of the RedNet monitor controller uh, unit individually as well, or you can also use uh, something similar to the Deadman because it's all what it is, it's a Dante routing, and then you can choose se several different routing paths, and then that unit would control that, so that would work as well. Now, uh, DSP plugins and live monitoring. This is an important question. Um, that I've been kind of navigating through here and doing my own research on all of them. So with the Galaxy, you got two options to do this. You got uh, the built-in native plugins, DSP plugins inside the Galaxy unit, which is called AFX. And these are um, some of their plugins that made by Antelope. And then, then you can put on an AFX, like almost like effects channels, and you can send audio to it and process that audio and then send it back to specific channels for monitoring or printing or recording or all that kind of stuff. So you do all that process outside of your DAW. That happens on the control uh, applications for the interface. And then you can process and you do it for live monitoring and then send it to your live room or something like this. That's option number one. Now option number two, if you are working with Pro Tools HDX and using the HDX cards, you can monitor from inside Pro Tools with no latency because you're using HDX and uh, some PCIe cards or HDX cards uh, for that processing, for the DSP processing. And in this case, you would monitor from inside your DAW and you do everything from the DAW. Uh, I like the, in the Galaxy you do both because sometimes you would use the Galaxy with Pro Tools but you don't necessarily have HDX. And then also getting the HDX cards uh, are very expensive. They're several thousand dollars. Uh, for those DSP processing, so you'd have to pay extra for those. Now with the Avid Matrix, uh, all of it is through the HDX cards, uh, and that's the main uh, one that you would use for these uh, DSP EQs, for these DSP plugin processing, so you got zero latency while you are monitoring live. Now the next is connectivity, and I was actually really surprised with the uh, Avid Matrix on this. So the Galaxy is a, a Thunderbolt 3 interface that you plug into your computer. It shows on your computer as a Thunderbolt 3 interface. You can use it with Pro Tools. You could use it with uh, any interface that you want. Uh, any, I'm sorry, you can use it with any DAW that you want. It just shows as an audio interface that provides you with 64 channels I.O. Uh, on your computer. Now with the Avid Matrix, I can understand because it feels like it's more targeted toward Pro Tools. You can just use Avid HDX and then, it, and then you use the, your HDX becomes your interface at that point. Use it just as the normal interface to play back music through it or play it with a different DAW, utilize it with a different DAW. You would have to actually buy an expansion 
Thunderbolt uh, card that you put it in it and it gives you two Thunderbolt ports, three Thunderbolt three ports, and then this the unit becomes recognized on your computer as like um, other normal interfaces are being recognized. Um, and that's why when I said the price point, it seems that the Avid Matrix is cheaper, but then when you buy that card, that card is $800, so then the price point becomes almost the same. Uh, it's only $400 difference between uh, both units. So um, make sure that if the Avid Matrix is the interface you're looking for, to make it work as a normal interface and work with different DAWs and playback engine and select it as to become your playback engine on your computer, you still need to buy that Thunderbolt card along with it. Now the RedNet is just being recognized as a Dante interface on your Dante network and that's all what you get out of it. Uh, you cannot necessarily play back audio through it or anything. It doesn't actually have any physical analog outputs or audio outputs or anything like this. Uh, so it's just, it's a way and it, like if I want to simplify it, the RedNet HD 32s are a way for you to grab Dante audio, convert it into HDX so you can use it in Pro Tools. That's pretty much the advantage of it. Next on the list is clocking. All three has clocks. In my opinion, the Galaxy clock and the Avid clock are superior to the RedNet clock, but they all three have clocks and they have loops for clocks and then you can run a full clocking through it. The next is the power supply. The Galaxy has its own power supply unit, it's an external power supply, and then it plugs into the back of the unit and it's made by Antelope or whatever. Um, I like when the power supplies are external, not internal and using IEC. That way, if something fries or burns or fries outside of the unit and I just replace the power supply versus having to open the unit. Now with the Avid Matrix and the RedNet, they both use IEC power supplies. With the difference in the RedNet has redundancy, has dual IEC on the back for redundancy's sake. Now, uh, the front panel of them, all three of them, uh, the RedNet had nothing on the front panel, really just some display for uh, your clock sample rate and some of the channels and stuff like that. The Galaxy has one main big knob for your monitor volume and mute, and then has uh, a couple buttons for shortcuts and then a display screen. But the Avid Matrix has more information and it has uh, headphone outputs and it has line inputs and it has a way for you to select um, which line outputs you're previewing, which line inputs you're previewing, as well as you're selecting uh, your preamp because it has two microphone preamps on the back and, and line input signal and stuff like that. So you could do more controlling on the front end of the Galaxy than the other two units. Software is another thing to consider and to keep in mind. So I, the Galaxy unit, they use the Galaxy control software. And in that software, you're basically controlling everything. You recognize the unit, you are looking at your headphone cues, you're looking at your routing, you're looking at your patching, you're looking at all the signals, ins and outs. You're, uh, you're managing your IOs, your physical IOs, you're also managing your digital IOs and Dante's and all that kind of stuff. And you're also managing the AFX plugin. So it's all in one place. Uh, it might look a little complex and I have a separate video explaining those in details for the Galaxy or the Antelope units, um, but it's all in one place. Now on the Avid side, you, uh, you have some of the routing is being done on Pro Tools side and then some of the routing is done in the Dadman software and you run everything inside that. So in my opinion, it's a little bit more complex in terms of routing and figuring out your routing versus the Galaxy is a little bit on the simpler side. And then the RedNet, uh, you have the RedNet control panel is a very simple panel that just recognize the unit. You can choose the sample rate for the unit and a couple simple features in it in terms of who's the master clock and stuff like that. But really all routing and patching is going to be done in your Dante controller because that unit is going to read as 60, uh, 32 channels of Dante. And then in your Dante controller software, then you get to patch and send signals anywhere. Both the Galaxy and the Avid Matrix, just to clarify, they have full routing capability in terms of it's very intricate and very advanced. You, I can take a specific signal coming from a physical line inputs or a digital or something and I can route that anywhere I want and I can duplicate it and I can send it to multiple places. There's a lot of flexible routing on both units that comes in really handy, especially when you start to work with a complex setup and complex studios or broadcast setups and you want to route audio signals and inputs and hardware inserts and you're getting some headphone pre's from this room and you're sending audio to the control room and you're just getting into more detailed stuff. So then they come in more handy for that reason. 
And finally, price point, like I've mentioned, the Galaxy is marked at about $6,000. The Avid Matrix is $5,000, but you would still need to purchase the Thunderbolt card if you want to uh, make it work as a normal interface on your computer. And then the RedNet is marked at $2,500, which is about half the price, but it has half the IOs in terms of digital, and it has absolutely zero analog IOs. Um, one thing to also consider, some of the most expensive piece of equipment and audio interfaces are always the converters. Both Galaxy and the Avid have great converters in them, but when you look at how many converters, the Galaxy have way more converters than the Avid Matrix because the Galaxy has 66 converters. You got 32 analog inputs, 32 analog outputs, and the speakers, but the Avid Matrix has less IOs and converters on it in terms of analog. That's something also to keep in mind price point. Um, normally converters are some of the most expensive uh, equipment in an interface. And when you got a lot more converters on the Galaxy, it makes sense why it's a little bit more expensive. And when you break it down to a price per converter, actually the Galaxy ends up being a little bit cheaper than the Avid Matrix. And it comes in handy if you have a lot of hardware gear that you wanna plug but you don't care about microphone pre's and headphone pre's. But if you care more about having a quick one or two microphone built-in microphone pre's and headphone pre's, then the Avid Matrix becomes a little bit more practical for you versus the Galaxy. I think this is a wrap for this video. Uh, I tried to explain all three interfaces in, in depth and in, in details. If you're looking into purchasing any of them, I hope that all of this uh, help you guys in your purchases. I will also include some links in my uh, description below for purchases with some discounts and promo codes if you're interested in them. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as much as I can. I hope you guys like this video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you at the next one.